Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Bedrock Guide. We just got back from a trip to the nether where we did some mining for ancient debris on a live stream, and we had some pretty great results. Right now, our running total is over 300 ancient debris just from a couple of trips, but that's enough of that for now. We are on to our next adventure. It is time to put away our infinity bow just for a little bit, and we're going to go ahead and put away our sword because we have this guy right here. We've got our first trident with Impaling 5, Unbreaking 3, Loyalty 3, Channeling, and Mending. We'll talk all about those here in just a few minutes. And if you don't know how to get one of these lovely tridents, all you've got to do is find yourself an ocean, which we have access to right over here. And you just gotta swim around and find these little drowned guys here for a little while. And if you hit these guys enough times, eventually you will get a trident. You can also pick up some of these Nautilus shells while hunting drowned, which will help you to craft a conduit. You also will need a heart of the sea for that. We are gonna fly over the ocean for a little bit until we can find an ocean monument. That is our first goal. And secondly, along with that goal, we are going to try to find a sponge room. Not every ocean monument has a sponge room, but hopefully the one that we find will have that because we're gonna need plenty of sponges for today's project. Which brings us to our third goal. We are are going to build our first pirate ship in our brand new base location. So first we're going to need potions of night vision because it gets very dark in the temple. We want to be able to see underwater without having to squint. This will help a lot. Bring those. Then we also need some potions of water breathing because we're going underwater and we can't naturally breathe underwater. So bring those with you because you'll be able to breathe. If your water breathing potion happens to run out, make sure you have respiration three on your helmet. That way, while you're fumbling around your inner chest, trying to grab another potion of water breathing, you'll still have plenty of time before that happens. Also good to have Aqua Affinity on there so you can mine quicker. And then Depth Strider. Depth Strider is huge for moving quicker through the water, so make sure you have that on your boots as well. Make sure to take a bucket of milk with you, and we'll talk about why as soon as we get there. So now we're just going to fly around over the ocean until we can find a Guardian Temple. We should be able to see it clearly in the water. Oh, there it is, there it is, right there, right there, right there. We see the little peak on top of the Guardian Temple. Fantastic. We found one, and we're just going to go ahead and land over here on this island that is not too far away from it so then basically what we can do is we can set up shop here make sure you do have a bed with you as well so that you can set your spawn which we just did in the untimely event of our death in the elder guardian temple we will respawn right back here and we can go back in and get our stuff and keep going so i don't need my elytra i'll go ahead and equip my chest plate and with that we're ready to go in so we're gonna go ahead and drink our potion of water breathing we've got that for eight minutes we've got our night vision for eight minutes but now you can see with night vision equipped, we can see this thing as clear as day. This has not been rated yet. We do have the mining fatigue effect. You will see these guardians, they will shoot lasers at you and they will lock onto you and they do a little bit of damage. It's not cool. But if you go up to them and you hit them, they also can deal damage to you with a thorns-like effect. So just keep that in mind, be careful. But here's where the trident comes in. We have so many enchants on this trident. We've got impaling five, which is basically the sharpness of the trident. It deals more damage. Unbreaking 3, we know all about that. We don't need to talk about it. Loyalty 3, tridents by nature do not return to you. If you throw a trident, it's like an arrow. It will land somewhere and you got to go pick it up. Loyalty 3 will make sure your trident comes right back to you every time you throw it. And that's basically the quick overview of the trident. We do have the mining fatigue effect and we cannot go through these blocks. It will take us forever to go through these blocks because of mining fatigue. So it's not really a viable option to mine right now. We just kind of want to hunt around this temple to try to find where the Elder Guardians are located. There are three Elder Guardians in every temple. There's one right there. You can tell they're different because they're gray. The regular Guardians are green and orange. Elder Guardians do similar things to guardians they shoot lasers at you they deal the thorns type damage but they also give you that mining fatigue this is why we've got that bucket of milk with us because we do want to get rid of the mining fatigue as soon as possible but it is not possible until all three elder guardians are taken down if we try to use this bucket of milk before we take out all three elder guardians then we're just gonna get slapped with mining fatigue again and we've wasted our bucket of milk. Typically, you can find one Elder Guardian on each of the sides of the temple on the bottom floor. And there's our second one. We'll go ahead and take him down. 
There we go. And they do drop things like sponges and fish and prismarine shards, all of which are good things. Our main goal coming to the Guardian Temple is to find sponges. Sponges will help us to drain water from the ocean, which is where we're going to be building our first build today. You can fly through these things pretty quickly. Oh yes, there is a sponge room. Fantastic. We want to get all of these sponges before we leave. Basically, all I'm doing right now is I'm looking for the way up into the top of the temple, which honestly, we don't even have to do. We've located the entrance again, and we're going to go on to the outside. You can see his tail flipping through the wall right there. We do have mining fatigue right now, and it does take a little while to mine through these blocks, but that's kind of the best approach. And it's honestly not too terribly long if you've got the best gear which we do let's just go through the ceiling we'll take out this last guardian forgot to mention this as well the great thing about the trident is you can use it as a melee weapon or as a throwable weapon so it kind of doubles as your sword and your bow and arrow i've got a whole video about the trident that you guys should check out i'll try to remember to leave the link in the description below what i am concerned about is finding the sponge room again here it is and we're gonna go ahead and mine this stuff out you can mine sponges by hand or with any tool, but typically hoes are the fastest way to mine sponges. I don't have one with me, but you can see these don't really take all that long to mine in the first place. And every once in a while, you'll find one of these rooms. And if we dig through this dark prismarine, there are gold blocks on the inside. If you have any more questions about the Ocean Monument Raid, be sure to join my Discord or leave comments in the comment section. I'd be happy to answer questions about that. But it was not the main focus of today's episode. So on our way back over to the base area, just to offer some perspective on where we are, that is the starter house. This is the fish farm. That is the creeper farm. And this little cove right here is where we're going to be building our main base for this go at the bedrock guide in the not so distant future we are going to be building an iron farm somewhere toward the top of this peak of the mountain and i think we're going to hollow out this mountain as well to do some things on the inside and then out here we'll have some pirate ships and maybe some shipwrecks and different things like that and that's what we're going to be working on today doing our first pirate ship which will kind of become our new home away from home over there all of these shulker boxes are filled with the things that we're going to need for our first build but before we can get to that, when dealing with water, it's not a bad idea to have a conduit. So we're going to take eight Nautilus shells that we got from our drowned friends down there. And we're also going to take a heart of the sea that we found in a treasure chest on one of our adventuring episodes. And we're just going to hit this crafting table right here and we'll craft up a conduit. We're going to use prismarine bricks, but you can also use prismarine, dark prismarine, any combination of those. I think you can even use sea lanterns in this, but we're going to just keep it consistent with our prismarine marine bricks so then we can go down under the water here and i think we're just going to try to aim for somewhere in the middle of this cove this seems like a good spot we'll go ahead and place a block here and a block there and temporarily just place our conduit on top of that then we can go ahead and get rid of that block and it'll just be floating there in the air that's totally fine then what we want to do is go to this direction to that direction so we've got five then what we can do is we can go up four more so that there's a total of five on this side five on this side and then connect the loop and we should see the conduit come to life we've got power so with conduit power we've got basically night vision underwater and infinite breathing so we don't need potions of water breathing or potions of night vision anymore at least as long as we are in range of this conduit if we move away you'll see the conduit power start to go down what we can do to increase the range is go ahead and place another loop of the same dimensions around this way then what we can also do is make a ring around the middle and now this conduit is at full strength so now that we can breathe underwater we're ready to start building and i want to kind of pick a spot out here in the middle of the cove. I don't want to be too close to the mountain so as not to crowd that area, but I don't want to be so far out into the ocean that it's not kind of self-contained. So right about here, we're going to go ahead and build up to maybe five, seven blocks or so below the surface of the water. Because if you think about an actual pirate ship, part of the ship is below the water. You don't want to build it on the surface, so you kind of want to get started underneath the water so you don't have to worry about doing that later. And then as we did with the starter house, we want to get a basic wireframe going for this boat that will give us our height, width, depth, 
dimensions without actually adding any detail just yet. And I'm not actually gonna give you guys any dimensions on what we're doing here, because this is not so specific as a starter house that has a basic shape to it. This is a little bit more complex. It's got a little bit more flow to it. So we'll talk about general concepts of how to get that flow, and then you guys can recreate this on your own. After a little bit of time, we've got a basic wireframe for our pirate ship. You can see we've got the shape across the top where the deck is gonna be, and even down into the water, we've got the bare bones of the shape of the hull, and everything is starting to come together, even though there's not a whole lot of detail. Because we are working in a world with a bunch of squares, and this is more of a rounded shape, this is a difficult look to pull off, but it is doable if you spend enough time just tinkering around and replacing blocks here and there. The next thing that we wanna do is start putting in the top deck of the pirate ship so we've got somewhere to stand. So we're gonna take our warped slabs and place them even with the top of these outer blocks here, at least in the middle of the ship. And then we'll kind of curve them a little bit up towards the front, but we might leave them down a little bit further below the rim here. So I think we're gonna leave it flat right here allow the edge of the boat to come up around the floor. And then as we get up to this point on the ship, maybe we start angling it up right here. Then maybe we'll just go ahead and angle it up just a little bit more here. And I think that looks pretty good. We will not leave this flat like this. We're going to do some decoration with some railings and things like that at some point. But let's go ahead and get this entire floor in first. All right, so far so good. We've got our main deck here and then we've got a little incline all the way up to the front of the ship. Earlier we were talking about how this is trying to accomplish a little bit of a rounded feel in a square world and it doesn't quite cut it. So that's where these slabs are gonna come in. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go at any junction point where these blocks are not connected and we're just gonna put a slab here and then we're gonna put a slab there. And that helps to sell the illusion a little bit more so that we have a little bit more of a rounded surface. That is looking a lot smoother than we had before. And all it is is slabs and stairs placed strategically around the perimeter of the ship. Now here's kind of the strategy that I followed when placing these, just so you guys kind of know the general idea. If it's going horizontally like this, I would put slabs. And then if we've got a section where it's going vertically, like these rib cage elements, we've got some stairs. These actually look a little bit smoother when going vertically and slabs look a little bit smoother when going horizontally. I know we're talking a lot about feel and it's kind of a hard concept to get across, but I would encourage you to just go online and look at some concept art, watch some movies, look at some pictures on Google. There's a lot of ways to look at those things and then put them into practice in your Minecraft builds. Again, if you have any questions about this, feel free to join up with my Discord. I'm always happy to answer questions on there, have conversations. It's a great place to hang out and talk about what you're working on. I've also laid out this perimeter here, two blocks below the top border, and it's pushed back one inside of the frame. This is going to be very important because this is going to be our first little bit of detailing. So I've got this concrete powder here, it's cyan concrete powder, and we want to make sure that this does not touch the water. Just like sand or gravel, if you take concrete powder and and place it anywhere that has air below it, it will fall. So it is important to have a solid surface below your concrete powder. If it falls into the water, it's not gonna look the same. It could look fine, but we're going for a little bit of a grainy feel on this build. We don't want it to be smooth and modern. I'm actually not a huge fan of this. And that's okay. When you're building, you're not always gonna like what you put out the first time. So I think what I don't like about it is that this is flat while the curve of the ship goes up here. I think I'm gonna try to match that angle. And if that still doesn't cut it, we might try to cut out the bottom row of concrete powder and just have one row going across the top, thin out the line a little bit. I did a little bit of tinkering because I wasn't really happy with how it was looking. And we did go ahead and narrow it down to one strip of concrete all the way across the side of the boat. But look at this, it looks like this this thing has seen some years and that's exactly what we want. We want the top to be a little bit more true to the original blackstone, polished blackstone feel. But as we get closer to the water, water splashing up onto the sides and even up underneath. Oh, it looks so nasty. <laughs> That's exactly what we want it to look like. Like the water has degraded some of the integrity of the boat. And I think we've accomplished that feel pretty well. So what I wanna do is finish the rest of the exterior on a time-lapse. So let's get that time-lapse rolling and we'll see you on the other side of it.
And that completes the exterior of our pirate ship. Everything is starting to come together. This actually looks like a legitimate ship now. It's missing quite a few things that a standard pirate ship has, but we're getting there. The next thing that we need to do is take care of this. But we can't just grab the sponges and use them straight out of the gate. We've got to pick them up because they are wet sponges. They were underwater at one point. We got to go over here to our furnace and drop them in here and dry them out. Once we've got our dry sponges, we can come in here and make sure that the room is subdivided. If we do this in a big open space, all of the infinite water sources are going to make it difficult to get all of the water cleared out. But this is still a lot faster than filling in the entire area, which is the alternate method of what you could do here. We've got this area cleared out and lit up, and I don't think we're going to do anything with it today. But we are on to the next part of our build, which is detailing the top deck. I've already got a little staircase in here just as an example, because I want you guys to see what you can do with detailing. This is pretty simple. There's only three different types of blocks here. So all we got to do is take our stairs and go upside down here and then right side up. And then we'll just follow this pattern until we get to be even with the staircase over here. And then we'll take a basalt pillar and do exactly what we did over there. This is exactly what we talked about with our starter house build. We want to make sure there's a lot of variety with textures and colors and that they're on different planes and not everything has to be completely separated. Like these are on the same plane here, but there is a degree of separation because this is a stair and that is a solid block. So keep your eyes out for creative ways that you can simulate depth. Once we get up to this top staircase here, we wanna make sure to put the slabs even with the top of the stair itself. If we place it here, we're not gonna be able to build anything on top of it because you can't build on bottom slabs. All right, the detailing is coming along really nicely for the command deck. We've got a little platform Lujay. here and, oh, oh, we've got Lujay, imposters. Lujay. We've got imposters. Oh, no. no, I'm here to help, I'm here to help. Are I'm you? here to help. Yes. Um, have ye seen any pirates, undead pirates down in the water with tridents? No, but you gotta go swab the deck really quick. Get going. Captain's it, orders. It it looks it looks kind of nasty. I think I'll stay away Walk from the you. plank. <laughs> I'm overboard. Help! Actually, this is where I want to be. So I'm looking for I'm looking for these guys, and I'm assuming since you've been around here working, you probably have a lot of the drowned around. Do you mind if I do you mind if I take care of this problem for you while I try to you find know, a try? Those undead pirates are a little bit annoying. So you you can clear these waters, and I would be more than happy with that. Okay, I will charge you 50 gold doubloons for this. What just hit me? Ah, he's got a trident. Get over here. Bye, Prowl. Don't die. While Prowl is looking for his trident, we've done a little bit of work on the face of this. We've got some framing for where some windows are going to go. This is going to be the door to get into the captain's cabin. And then we've got plenty of space in here to expand. I've also used these warp stems for a little bit of a wallpaper feel that still matches the feel of the boat, but adds a little bit of a color variation with that maroon purple look as well. I think that fits the feel of this ship. We're also using some creative cross beams and pillars to cover up the fact that there's a staircase right there in line with our wallpaper. So just try to find creative ways to mask these things and your builds will look a lot better. Hey, nice trident, buddy. Yeah, yeah, very nice. I did finally get one down there. Um, I got I got a couple things for you, okay? So Ooh, first of okay. all, um, as a uh, thank you for letting me uh, kill those guys and get a trident, <gasps> every pirate ship needs a treasure map. Okay. okay, 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 number, where's the... Number two, um, you can have that. That's for our, um, the services that I've performed. Number three, here's a fire resist potion. I hear that you die a lot to fire and lava. You could use that. Thanks, goodbye. For the services of eliminating dozens of filthy minions from the depths of Davy Jones' locker, you owe Prowl 50 gold doubloons or a two times multiplier in the next resource roulette you pick. What? Hey, come back here. Yeah, that was weird. So after looking in the handy dandy pirate code book for new pirates, I have figured out that doubloons are Spanish coins. Not sure where we're gonna find those, but we'll make something work for Prowl. There we go. That'll do it. 
I've chosen to go with some black stained glass panes. I'm gonna throw one right here and one right here. I think that looks really nice with some stairs kind of framing out that window. And it's just small enough that you can kind of peek inside, but you know, it's the captain's quarters, so we don't want anybody to just be able to look in there. So that's good for the windows. And then we've got the warped door that we are gonna put on the inside this way so that there is a little bit of separation right there. I think that looks really nice. And then on the inside here, I think we are going to save this for the next episode. We're gonna save some of the detailing. I definitely don't wanna rush this build. I wanna make sure everything looks good. Everything is on par with the quality that we wanna produce on this channel. So in order to get the episode out on a reasonable time frame, we might have to save some stuff. Here's where things are gonna get even more fun. We're going to start finishing off the actual look of this ship with some sails. So we're gonna take some black stone walls and we're gonna build this up pretty high. I think that's pretty close. We might wanna go a little bit taller because I do wanna fit at least two, maybe three sails, one large one and then a couple small ones. And I'll go ahead and do two more pillars back here. One right here and one right here. These are about 11 blocks apart and these two are about seven. I thought about doing this one 11 as well just to kind of keep them all evenly spread, but it crowded the cabin a little bit too much. So I opted for pushing it a little bit closer to the middle section here. Hey, that's more like it. That's looking pretty good. I think the heights are pretty decent. We may have to adjust a few things as we get the sails in place, but let's go ahead and get started on the first one, which is going to be the top one on the front here. This is going to be a special one so i want to make sure that i've got enough room for it for our sails we have gray wool and cyan concrete powder and what we want to do is basically attach one here at the end of the cross beam and then attach one here at the end of this cross beam then we'll put a temporary block here and go one out and then try to reclaim this one without it falling to the ground very good and then we can go one more here one here one here and one there then we'll do the same thing over on this side. Temporary block, place that one there. We'll let that one drop to the ground for now. And then because we don't have scaffolding to place on, we'll put a temporary block here, break that one, and then another block right there. You can already see that it's giving a little bit of a curved shape to the front of the sail. This is going to make it look like wind is blowing into it, even though we're kind of docked here in the cove, but you get the idea. We're kind of making it look like we're prepping to go sailing and go on to a piratey adventure. Again, this is something very important with building like this. You want to take a step back and see what you've got. This is still rather small. I've got the size of the first sail to a place that I think is really decent. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and punch a few of these out. I've got my shears here and we're going to punch that one, 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 and that one. If you don't recognize this shape by now, this is a creeper face. And what is more intimidating to the surrounding community for a pirate ship than a creeper face? Oh yeah. Oh, that's good. I might try punching out the corners here as well, just to see what that looks like. I might want to play with it a little bit more, maybe get some color onto the sides here, but that is the focal point. That's what we want to be staring at. So I think I'm going to tinker with this for a little bit, get the rest of the sails in place, and then we'll come back and show you the rest of the build. Okay, listen, guys, I know you're pirates too, but this is my ship. Uh-oh, we can't die on our own ship. No, 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 no. Okay, where's my boat? Where's my boat? Where's my boat? <laughs> they walked the plank. Well, that took a lot longer than I'd hoped, but I have something I am pretty happy with at this point. We've got all of the sails done. And if we take our customary view over here, it looks pretty stinking sweet. We've got our main sail right there that's got the creeper face on it, and I kept the rest of them black. Technically, it's dark gray, but I kind of like just having the main sail being the only one that has a feature on it. It just makes the rest of it look clean and intimidating and just super, super cool. Uh, some of these sails we have still folded up because we aren't quite ready to go sailing just yet. So when we are ready, they can unroll and we've got one that's turned a little bit sideways. We can direct that one and it'll help kind of steer the ship. All in all, I'm pretty happy with how this is looking, but I have run out of time for this episode. We still have quite a bit of work to do on the ship. We're going to get it done in the next episode. We're going to get some railing here, some cannons. We got to finish the captain's cabin. There are a few things left to do that are most 
complete detailing, but that's gonna complete our project for today. But if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a comment in the comment section to let me know what you enjoyed most. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe so you can catch more Bedrock Guide content just like this. But that's gonna do it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.